All right, so let's think about uh, on a, as, uh, our current. Is the current going to want to move from positive to negative or from negative to positive? way does it want to move from positive to negative or from negative to positive? From Terms. positive to negative. Right. Because remember, positive here really represents high potential, and negative represents low potential. We can just use our analogy. This represents a high point, and this represents a low point. Well, things want to move lower. If you use the gravitational analogy, things want to move from high to low. Um, if uh, if I let go of this eraser, it's not going to move higher, it's going to move lower. Everything wants to get lower. So that's a good analogy for potential. That tells us that the current is going to be moving in this direction through the circuit. And that's very important to be able to figure out what direction the current is going in through a circuit. The flow of positive charges goes from the positive to the negative terminal. Now, maybe a faster way to do that is, remember, this doesn't really represent a charge, but just as a mnemonic, we could think of it as a charge. If this really represented a positive charge and this represented a negative charge, well, where would, the, where would a positive current want to go? It would be attracted towards this negative charge. It's a little bit dangerous because, again, this isn't really a charge. It's a low potential, but I hope that just helps us as a mnemonic. Ha, uh, that's one reason why it's helpful to use a plus for a high potential and a negative for a low potential, because positive charges want to move away from a high potential, just like they would want to move away from a positive charge. And positive charges want to move towards a, a low potential, just like they would want to move towards a negative charge. Now remember that what's really moving here is electrons. What's really happening is the electrons are moving away from the negative terminal and towards the positive terminal. Because we saw last time that electrons, negative charges, want to move towards a high potential. Everything wants a low energy. But the way to get a low energy if you're negative is to move towards the higher potential. Because for a negative charge, potential represents lowness or depth. Uh, and again, you could just as a mnemonic think, well, a negative charge would tend to want to get away from something negative and move towards something positive. This doesn't really represent a negative charge, but the electron is acting like it represented a negative charge, moving away from here and towards here. All right, so I just wanted to point out that even though we imagine a current of positive charges moving clockwise here, what's really happening is a current of negative electrons moving counterclockwise. But it turns out that you'll get pretty much all the right answers as long as you're consistent. So I'm going to forget about the electrons from now on and just focus on the positive current. We're always going to focus on positive current. That's the conventional way to do these problems. All right, and then as a shortcut, since it's positive, it shouldn't be too hard to remember that the positive current wants to move away from the positive plate and towards the negative plate. So the current doesn't like being here. So how did it get here in the first place? How did, um, in order for this to be a circuit, when the, once the current gets here, it has to be moved to this positive plate. Otherwise, we would grind to a halt. Well, that's why we need an outside power source. That's the whole point of the battery being outside power source. It can move the current where it doesn't want to go. So what happens here is the current falls from high to low, which it does naturally. That's what it wants to do. And then the battery forces it to move back up to the high point, it moves it back up to the high plate. That's, where, that's what takes the energy or the power source. And once it's back up at the high plate, it'll just naturally fall back down to low again. Um, the anal an, uh, so an analogy I like here is the ski lift analogy. Um, we could think about this point here being, say, uh, the bottom of a mountain or the bottom of a ski lift, and this point being the top of the mountain or the top of the ski lift. Well, the purpose of the ski lift is to pull the skiers from the low point to the high point, and then they just automatically can ski back down to the bottom. But in order for the cycle to continue, the ski lift then has to move them back up to the high point again. I think that's a really useful analogy to think of this uh, as a ski lift, so maybe we'll come back to that. Just like a ski lift would move skiers from low to high, the battery is moving the positive current or positive charges from low to high. So what does it mean if this is a 12 volt battery? What does that tell us about the battery? Um, that it takes 12 volts to move it from low to high? Or that it takes for a one to one charge, it takes 12 volts? 12 what? I'm sorry, 12 joules to move it across the plate. 
the charge across the plate for one of the hands. Good. So your second description, see your description there got better and better as you went along. So that's good. It doesn't mean too much to say that it takes 12 volts to move something. What we want to say is how many joules it takes to move the charges. Well, here's where it helps to remember that a volt is a joule per coulomb. Volts are joules per coulomb. This tells us that every time the battery moves one coulomb between the, uh, between the terminals, I should say, not the plates, every time we take, move one coulomb between the terminals, uh, it has to be giving it 12 joules of energy, which means the battery must be doing 12 joules of work. It's kind of like the ski lift. So in our analogy, the skiers are like the coulombs. So this is like a ski lift. Every time it lifts a skier up to here, it might be giving them doing 12 joules of work and giving them 12 joules of extra energy. Uh, remember, another way to think about this is in terms of height. So we can think of this, this is moving the charges to a point that's 12 units higher. And then they would naturally just fall back down to the lower point again, and then it moves them up to a point that's 12 units higher again. So it would be like a ski lift that's moving the skiers to a point that's 12 miles higher. No, no not 12 miles. 12 units higher. Now, um, do you remember what this is the symbol for? This is the symbol for a resistor. Okay. So a jagged line like this is the symbol for a resistor. This looks kind of like a, this looks kind of like the symbol on Charlie Brown's T-shirts all, all, all the yeah. time that he's wearing. All right, so uh, maybe that's a secret <laughs> message that Charlie Brown is really into electronics. He's got the resistor symbol across his uh, T-shirt. Going back to our analogy, remember that we're thinking of this as like a ski lift that pulls the skiers up. So how would the rest of the circuit fit into our analogy? Well, we should think of the devices then, like the resistors, as the downhill portion then of the ski course from that point on. And the rest of the circuit, the rest of the wire, we should think of as flat. So as long as you're skiing along here, you're not moving up or down. This is just a flat portion, and then this is the downhill portion over here. So we generally assume um, that the rest of the, the wire here and here and here, we're not moving up or down in terms of our ski lift analogy. We're only moving down when we move across the devices like a capacitor or a resistor, but we'll start by focusing on the resistor. Well then, if this battery is moving the charges 12 units up in height, what would have to be the voltage change when we move across this resistor? Um, 12 units. Yeah, which would mean 12 volts, because we're ending up back where we started. Remember, we started here. Then we went up 12 units of height. And then when we go through the circuit, we end up back where we started. Well, that means that any height that we gain over here has to be lost in the rest of the circuit. So just if we have a 12-volt battery here, this must be a 12-volt resistor. I guess I shouldn't say a 12-volt resistor. I should say that right now this represents um, a voltage change of 12 volts. But you also specified something important. We would consider this a voltage source and this a voltage drop. Maybe in some way, in some problems, you might call this positive 12 and this negative 12. But those are actually kind of advanced problems. Usually, we don't put signs on the voltages. But we should know that this represents a voltage source, and this is a voltage drop. Or in our analogy, this represents a gain in height, and this represents a loss in height. Well, that makes sense. If you start here and you gain 12 units of height, then you'll have to lose 12 units of height so we can come back to where we started. because our height isn't changing on the other parts of the circuit, because in our analogy, these are flat. So this would be a 12-volt drop. 